Hello everyone. So, in the previous video, we talked about the uh, series pass voltage regulator. We did a, a very <laughs> thorough overview of the theory of how they work. And we went through from a, a simple buffer center to a, a very, very simple, discrete, um, adjustable voltage regulator like this. And in the end, we finalized it with the classic circuit, the very crude one of uh, a voltage uh, regulator based on an op-amp, okay? So after all that theory, uh, in today's episode, I decide to go uh, one step further, and we are just going to look at a very, very simple, uh, let's call it the basis of any sort of lab power supply, okay? So first things first, uh, any lab power supply, must have two things, voltage control, so the voltage should be adjustable, but also it should have current control, because you got to be able to limit the current, not just a, a trip the uh, output if the current exceeds a, a certain level or something like that. No, you need to actually be able to control the current. Uh, this is very simple and can be uh, implemented uh, in a number of ways, but it is key to any sort of lab power supply. Because hey, let's say it's in a lab environment, you <laughs> you don't know what you're going to be powering up with it. So it has to be as versatile as possible. So if you have a current controlled uh, supply, you can use it to do current limiting, since you're going to be testing stuff that you don't, that you're not sure if it's shorted, if it will draw excessive current and uh, uh, damage something or something like that. So you need to be able to do that. And sometimes all you need is just a, a, uh, a current source. And, that, and if you limit the current, that's, well, that's basically a current source. If you want to power an LED or an LED driver or something like that. So that's uh, pretty important on that setting. You also need a lot of protection because, hey, uh, again, it's a lab environment. You have no clue what your end user or even yourself will be plugging into the output of that. So it has to be protected against basically everything you can throw at it. Um, current, uh, current and voltage being um, input into the outputs, uh, massive overcurrents, uh, uh, transients, inductive loads, capacitive loads, it has to basically just uh, handle all those circumstances as best as possible. But in this episode, we are just going to look at bare bones. Um, in the circuit that I'm going to show you here, it's very generic. It's going to be kind of like the basis for the high voltage power supply that we'll be uh, building here in this channel. But it's so generic that you can use it for everything. If you want to build, for example, a 30 volts, a 0 to 30 volt supply, whatever you need, that circuit's going to be <laughs> your, your uh, basis for it. Uh, all you need to do is just adjust some of the uh, values of the components, uh, change the uh, uh, current sense resistor or the uh, pass elements, either for more current or for more voltage. That's all up to you but it's going to be a very versatile circuit and something that you definitely should build yourself, okay? You don't need to buy a uh, fancy power supply um, for your lab. You can build it your own. It's very simple. It's a great project. You learn a lot from it. And uh, yeah, and it's very rewarding, okay? So let's jump right into that. So first, let's talk about the voltage control, just as we've seen here, okay? So I've done this in a LT Spice, just <laughs> made things a bit simpler and easier on me. Uh, so that's why it's using the uh, <laughs> American notation. Okay. Uh, that's not something that I like, but it's the way it is. I, I didn't want to go to uh, Eagle and redraw this whole thing since I already had it on uh, LT Spice. So let's talk about this circuit, okay? First of all, this circuit, it's <laughs> basically the same thing that we had here. Just with uh, some modifications, of course, it has a lot more uh, supporting components around it. That's because of the whole uh, current control part of the supply. So you can just uh, ignore the sense resistor. You can ignore this this capacitor and uh, uh, resistor here and some stuff like that. Most of this, uh, <laughs> it's it's just for uh, frequency compensation. 
and uh, mitigations in terms of oscillation of the circuit. Again, hey, you have no clue what's going to be uh, attached here, so you need to take care of all that. Uh, that's why most of the times uh, beginners, when they design a circuit like this, you don't see any resistors, it's just everything's just connected together <laughs> and stuff like that. And then they just look at uh, a professional circuit and they have no clue why there are just so many resistors, so many capacitors. Hey, that's all about compensation and um, making sure that your circuit is stable and precise, okay? So we're going to be uh, going through some of that here in this video in a, in a little bit as soon as we uh, complete the circuit with the current control part. But for now, just ignore all this fluff, okay? So we still have the same topology with the pass element. This is just a resistor to uh, uh, make sure that uh, this, uh, this transistor here in the Darlington pair uh, shuts off uh, faster than normal, okay? Uh, you can learn more about why this resistor is here um, in my uh, Darlington and uh, compound feedback pair video, which uh, I'll probably throw up a card right here. Now, we have this uh, current sensing resistor here. Let's not uh, worry about that right now. We have a little bit of capacitance here in the output just to uh, uh, smooth out any transients. Whenever you have a lab power supply like this, uh, don't put a lot of capacitance in your output. I know you're just used to just throwing capacitance at the problem. Hey, if you have any ripple, if you have any noise, just throw capacitance at it. That's not how it should be done, especially on a power supply, in a lab power supply like this. Because the bigger you make this capacitor right here, the more problems you're going to have. Because hey, let's say that uh, your load that's right here, let's say you put a, a thousand microfarad capacitor here, just so that you're 100% sure this thing's going to uh, withstand any sort of transient, <laughs> just going to curb all that noise. There will be a huge problem because let's say you you're plugging in your circuit here and all of a sudden you make some uh, uh, bonehead mistake and you short the supply okay well, you have a mosfet that was supposed to uh, uh, be be uh, controlling an led or motor or anything like that and something goes wrong and it just shorts the supply that capacitor is just going to dis discharge onto your circuit and it's just going to destroy whatever uh, um, transistor that uh, tried to short the supply so that's not good okay so this capacitor here it's basically there mostly for noise suppression and a very small uh, um, transient mitigation okay so put as little capacitance here as possible now this resistor here, it's just, uh, uh, again, for frequency compensation, just to keep this whole thing happy. Same thing with this capacitor here. This just, may, this just uh, provides a, a low impedance path, feedback path for high frequencies, just in case, hey, uh, this op amp starts to oscillate. It will oscillate, especially as soon as we attach the uh, current control here. This thing would oscillate like crazy whenever you hit the current limiting, okay? So you need this so that uh, high frequencies just have basically just a short to the feedback um, node so that it doesn't amplify any sort of oscillation and just makes this circuit uh, operate properly and be stable. Same thing here. So as soon as you look at this, the first thing that you need to uh, keep in mind is that before here, what we had was we had a, a reference here come to the uh, uh, non-inverting input and we're basically just amplifying this reference with this uh, feedback network here in this case it's a bit different we are amplifying our uh, our set voltage or our reference okay by a factor of 10 because hey that's the classic uh, 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 non-inverting op amp formula again it's uh, just the ratio between these two resistors plus one so in this case, it's going to be uh, uh, 10 times gain. And instead of having a reference, what we have here is just a voltage input. Of course, this voltage input should come from a reference. So uh, just like we had here, uh, what we could have here is just uh, this 
uh, layout like this and just put a potentiometer here and the output of the potentiometer coming to here and it's going to be basically the same thing. The idea here is that on a circuit like this, you're, this these resistors are the ones that are setting your, uh, your output voltage, okay? But if you make it into this configuration, you can't control this, for example, from a microcontroller because you will need to uh, be varying this uh, network right here. So that's no good. And this way, it's extremely versatile. So you can just put the output of a microcontroller here and you can control the voltage here in the output. All that it is doing is amplifying whatever voltage that you put here by a factor of 10. So if you put one volt here, you have 10 volts here on the output. <laughs> it's just as simple as that, okay? So remember that this voltage here will determine uh, the uh, voltage regulation here in the output. So make sure that this is as noise free, as ripple free as possible, okay? Treat this as a uh, variable, ref var variable voltage reference, okay? So make sure any sort of noise or ripple or any sort of um, of a uh, uh, indesirable uh, side effects, this is completely free of that. Okay, that's very important. So yeah, the voltage part is extremely simple, as you can see. This is basically just a voltage amplifier, a timestamp voltage amplifier. Okay, so with all that said, let's go into the actual. Uh, current control part of this because as it is right now there is just uh, nothing stopping you from drawing whatever load uh, you want in here okay ah just one more thing before we we go into that uh, we have v plus here let's just assume whatever voltage you want here if you want to put let's say you want to go from uh oh something that i didn't talk in the uh, in the intro section uh Another thing that a lab power supply should have, it should have the ability to go down to zero volts, okay? Because hey, let's say sometimes you need uh, uh, 0 0.1 volts at the output with a lot of current. Hey, I've, uh, I've done that a lot when I just needed to uh, test resistive elements and stuff like that, and all that I needed was <laughs> 0.1 of a volt and uh, the resistor was pulling like five amps, okay? So that's also very important. And now uh, with a circuit like this, you can do that uh, very simply. Something that you can't do, for example, some like an LM317, okay? So uh, let's say you want a, a zero to a 30 volt power supply. You don't put 30 volts here at V plus. You should put a lot more, let's say, if it was a, uh, as a classic, like 30 volt, three amp uh, lab power supply output here, uh, 40 or 35 on regulator here and uh, <laughs> you'd be good to go okay so just whatever voltage that you need here in the output hey just put some margin here in your supply rail okay in this design I'm not going to be using a, a negative supply here uh, for the op amps especially in the current side but that's something that you could look into if you want to use a, a, some lower end type of devices okay now, let's take a look at this circuit right here. As the circuit stands, this is just basically a, 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 a very simple, very crude lab power supply. Okay, this is the bare minimum that you should have uh, in order to have any sort of uh, uh, power supply in your bench, okay? So you can replicate the circuit and you can use it uh, for your uh, uh, own supply, but it, hey, it's not the, the best circuit. It's not uh, properly done. And uh, we'll be taking a look at how to improve this and make it better in the next few videos where I'm just going to talk about protection and all that. But hey, this is good enough, okay? So first thing, as soon as you see something like this, it looks a bit daunting, as we've <laughs> discussed previously on uh, uh, the headphone amplifier series and the shunt regulator. Hey, as soon as you get a circuit like this, it, it looks very daunting. You need to separate it into... Uh, some very uh, uh, common building blocks because every circuit is just a collection of building blocks most of the time okay so first things first you can see here that uh, basically if you draw a line around here 
uh, this bottom part is just uh, the current control and the bottom and the top part is your voltage control. Now, here on the top, as we've seen previously, this is just basically a, a voltage follower. It's just amplifying whatever voltage we have here, here on this output, and we have a bit of um, a uh, current buffering to uh, increase our uh, uh, current handling capabilities. So this op amp here is just amplifying whatever voltage here. Then it goes through a, a Darlington pair here to the output. So that's uh, just textbook stuff. Now here on the uh, bottom side, we have very low value resistor, so we know that the voltage here is going to be very low. So we are just uh, uh, amplifying that voltage again by a factor of 10. Okay, And uh, here is the actual current control part of things. And uh, if you see here, it's the same thing as here. This is just a voltage amplifier, a DC voltage amplifier. Very simple stuff textbook stuff. And here, what you have, if you just look at the op amp like this, you can see that there is no feedback, no, no negative feedback. In this case it has, but again, this is just for um, uh, preventing this thing from, from going into oscillation and controlling all of the frequency poles, making sure that this thing has good transient performance. Again, stuff that we're going to be talking about in a later video. And oh, by the way, uh, this circuit right here, I will provide uh, the uh, LT Spice file so that you can uh, uh, simulate this on your own and play around with this. It's very important that you play around with this stuff in a simulator just so that you understand hey, just remove these capacitors one by one, just see how it works, uh, increase these capa this capacitance, decrease this capacitance, just see how the circuit. Uh, <laughs> uh, operates and how it reacts to over voltages, over currents and uh, all sorts of scenarios. Okay, you're going to learn a lot by doing that. And I highly suggest you do so. That's why I'm uh, uh, making this available for you. Okay. Um, so what more can I talk about in here? So yeah, oh, yeah, that's this uh, thing is it's hooked up as a comparator and a very <laughs> fast one, by the way. So yeah, that's that. Uh, what else can I say about this? Oh, by the way, these uh, op amps here, I just chose a, 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 a very common op amp on LT Spice just so that I could uh, uh, simulate this. These op amps are not the op amps that you should be using on your uh, final uh, circuit, okay? Just for this op amp, choose something that has a very low um, input offset. Okay, the, the the best that you can get, uh, but there is no harm in just putting an LM uh, three two four here. Okay, same thing here. You can put an LM three two four, perfectly fine. Or even better, hey, you can just put a, a very good comparator here. You could just put a comparator instead of an op amp. No problems whatsoever there. Now for this op amp right here, uh, in theory. The best thing to do would be to actually uh, put a, a very good op amp here uh, with extremely low uh, uh, voltage input offset, okay? Because this thing is going to be measuring very low voltages, so that's uh, adamant for good current measurements. And uh, Ideally, what you should use here is instrumentation amplifier so that you could can actually uh, measure this thing uh, differentially and then put it into a, 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 an amplification stage like this. Okay, so just some things to keep in mind. Uh, if you're doing something like this just for your bench, hey, I, you shouldn't just be using a instrumentation amplifier. Just put in a, an LM324 here. Uh, slap in a, a negative supply, just a minus five volts supply, just so that uh, you don't run into any sort of trouble with the uh, input offsets and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, that would be perfectly acceptable for uh, the hobbyist at home. Okay, but if you're building something that has to have any sort of precision, you just go for an instrumentation amplifier with it, some gain. Okay, so. What can we say here? First of all, you need to choose a sense resistor that will provide you with enough uh, voltage here 
that you can amplify and have something meaningful here. In this case, I just chose a, a 0.1 ohm resistor. Keep in mind that the more current that this draws, the more voltage will be uh, will appear across this resistor, making your differential voltage here, or the voltage that's actually going into your load, lower by a, a, a bit. Okay, so let's say if this if your load was drawing um, one amp you would see a 0.1 volts here. So if this was at 12 volts, uh, your load would actually be seeing 19.9 uh, .9 volts across it, okay? Because uh, this node is not referenced to ground, it's referenced to this point right here. And the more current you draw, the greater uh, voltage appears across this resistor and less voltage goes through your load. Uh, this can be mitigated. You could have put it uh, here between the output of the pass element and your uh, V plus in your uh, the positive terminal of your load and just tie this directly to your ground. But then you'd have to do um, high side current sensing. And if you're interested in that sort of stuff, I can cover it in a later video. Just leave your uh, suggestion in the comments. Okay. But the problem with high side is that you then you for sure you will need a uh, differential measurement there, which means you will need a uh, an instrumentation amplifier at least there to measure that. And things just uh, just get a, a bit uh, more difficult there. This is supposed to be a simple circuit that anyone can build. Okay, and so no instrumentation amplifiers, no fancy stuff. But this has that downside with a low side uh, current sensing that you get voltages, voltage differences here depending on your load. So you need to make sure that this resistor is as low as you can get uh, in order to uh, mitigate that problem. But you can't make this way too low because then your op amp might not be able to amplify that voltage. Another thing that you need to uh, uh, keep in mind is that the lower the voltage here, the more noise you have. So the more noise you have here in the output. So it, there are always uh, trade-offs with any circuit that you build. Okay, so you just have to uh, strike a balance there. All right. So if this circuit was drawing, if your load was drawing one amp, you would have a 0.1 volts here. So we amplify that by 10. You would have uh, uh, one volt here at the uh, monitor output, just so that it's something that's more manageable. And uh, this volt output here, this is just the monitoring uh, uh, um, voltage, so that you can, let's say, run this to your microcontroller or some sort of a panel uh, meter or anything like that. So you can monitor your current right here. It's going to be amplified and low impedance so that you can uh, be sure to hook that up to anything that you might want. And uh, that feeds into this comparator right here. And the way that this works is that you set your uh, um, current limit by applying a voltage here to the uh, non-inverting, the inverting input of this comparator. So let's say I want to limit this uh, the load current here to one amp. I put one volt here at this node. So this, what this comparator is going to do, the way that it's hook up, hooked up, uh, whenever this voltage here goes above this voltage that's set here, so if there is one volt here, if this goes to, let's say, 1.1 volts, the output of this comparator is going to go high. And as soon as it goes high, what happens is it's going to turn on this transistor here, which is going to shunt the voltage that you have set right here. And when you do that, then this uh, uh, voltage here falls. And when this voltage here falls, you're basically just trying to fight an equilibrium where this will uh, limit, be limited to that one amp by varying that voltage, okay? So this circuit, it's completely off this, at least this, so yeah, there is a helicopter passing around here. No clue why. It's 8.30 <laughs> at night. Okay. It's probably a military helicopter because we have a, a military airstrip near here. Okay. So, <laughs> back to this. Um, so basically, the way that this thing works uh, is that it is shunting that voltage to find an equilibrium 
in order to keep this uh, uh, the current passing through here less than what you've set in here. One thing that you got to keep in mind as well is that this circuit, this at least this part of the circuit, is completely off if it, you're in constant voltage mode. If you haven't uh, exceeded your your uh, current limit, then this part is just off and it's doing nothing. It only kicks in when you need to, uh, when it needs to. Okay. Now, in order for us to better understand this, let's just uh, exemplify this. Okay. So let's say, let's just ignore the, your uh, supply rate here, just make it as high as possible for this example. Let's say we put one volt here and the VSET node. What happens is this op amp is going to make sure that there is 10 volts here in the output and you have no load connected. Okay, so you 10 volts will appear here. This circuit is going to be turned off. This is just basically going to be uh, uh, measuring the noise floor of, the, uh, of your. Uh, supply okay so if we put a, a 9 ohm resistor here in the output what happens is um, this load is going to try to pull uh, around 1.1 amps through here and let's say we have set this uh, uh, current limit to 1 amp by putting 1 uh, volt here at the I set node so what's going to happen is as soon as you plug in that load current will start to flow through it. Uh, the voltage here at this node is going to rise above that uh, uh, 0.1 volt. It's going to reach, let's say, 0.11 volt. 1.1 uh, volt is going to appear in here. So there will be an imbalance here between the inputs of this uh, comparator. So that it's going to th turn on. By shunting this here, it's going to shunt this resistor to ground. Yeah. Uh, and by doing that, it will lower the node here, which will lower the uh, voltage here in the output. Again, this is just basically going to turn this on completely. But what happens is, since all of this is just linear, it's with all of these uh, capacitors that we've added, this thing is not going to just shunt it completely. It's actually going to be putting a voltage here on the output, a current, because this is a... Uh, uh, common emitter type of uh, uh, topology. So basically it's just going to put uh, enough current here to keep this voltage at bay. And what voltage is going to be that? It's going to reach an equilibrium as soon as the load here is at nine volts. So it's going to shunt uh, some current here to make sure that this is a voltage divider and that uh, 0 0.9 volts appear here in the input. That's just basically, uh, uh, reaching that equilibrium and as soon as we uh, remove that resistor from here this is just going to la this is going to uh, see that this node is uh, lower than this node right here so it's going to turn off its output which is going to turn off this uh, transistor right here which will let this voltage rise to whatever value it needs well, as it was before at one volt so our 10 volts is restored in here so it's pretty simple. You can see how the circuit is. Uh, it's pretty simple to understand as soon as we exemplify it. All right. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, if this thing just turns this on hard, this is just going to uh, go to uh, ground and this uh, load is just going to be uh, uh, turned off, which is a big problem. That's how we get oscillations when the current limit hits because this thing is just going to be uh, uh, basically just pulse with modulating the, its output to try to uh, uh, maintain that equilibrium and it's just going to be a mess that's why we put put this capacitor these capacitors in here just so that uh, all that high frequency comes back to the feedback through the feedback path and uh, that's all mitigated and stabilizes the circuit okay um, also, uh, if we have a large transients here, same thing. These things are going to make sure that uh, it doesn't overshoot or undershoot as um, badly. And also, most importantly, that they don't ring. If you put this into the uh, in LT spies and run simulations on this and uh, change these uh, values here, huh, you'll pretty soon see how that's important and how. Um, it changes the output. Okay, it's very uh, interesting and fun to do that.
Um, let's see. Uh, oh, another thing uh, <laughs> that these uh, uh, capacitors here, compensation, uh, help. Let's say you have a dynamic load, for example, an amplifier, okay? Uh, it's current, the current that's going to be drawing, it's like a, let's say, a sinusoidal wave. And uh, the thing about that is that, let's say that you have your current limit set to one amp, and it's just, and the amplifier is just going to be drawing that at a peak of the sine wave. What happens is, as soon as it, heat, it hits that, this circuit will turn on, but then the load is going to lower as soon as the voltage lowers as well, because it's not uh, caring about this uh, voltage, it's just uh, pulling less current. And what happens is that this circuit would enter into a state of uh, oscillation just because of that, because this would then turn off, but this would then uh, uh, put your uh, voltage lower, but then it would rise, and then this would turn on again, and it would just create some feedback that would uh, create those oscillations. So that's how that stuff happens, okay? So yeah, this was it. This was pretty simple. Uh, I don't think I can uh, talk more about this. You're probably just bored to death with this, but hey, um, I hope you've enjoyed it, okay? So this is a, a very good circuit. You can just uh, take this as it is, put this thing onto some perf board, put some uh, nice heat sinking onto your pass element, just this element, right? this transistor right here, uh, because, hey, uh, this is the only one that you want to cool off. You don't want this to be uh, uh, getting hot since uh, this it's VBE changes. Okay, so just put this on a nice bit of heat sink. Get a transformer. Uh, create a, an unregulated supply, which you can uh, check out my video on how to properly design an unregulated supply. Put it right there. Hey, put some uh, banana plug, banana post on the on the front, uh, get one of those eBay uh, 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 voltage in the uh, current meters, and hey, you're all set. <laughs> you have your lab power supply. So this is very versatile. You can just put an Arduino here and uh, set your voltage and currents. Uh, the sky is the limit with this sort of stuff. But this, I hope that you use this uh, on your next project. It's very versatile, and again. Uh, a great circuit to have on your circuit toolbox, all right? So in the next video, what I'm going to be talking about is more about the uh, safety aspects of this and uh, actually making it safer for use on a bench with stuff like, hey, if you have a capacitance in the output here that uh, your load has capacitance, not the actual capacitance inside of your lab supply, how to deal with that. So we're going to talk about crowbars and uh, uh, protection diodes and the output and the inputs and outputs of a circuit like this. We're going to talk about um, uh, hard current limits for uh, overload of, of the, uh, this supply right here and all of that sort of good stuff, okay? So be sure to check out the next video where we actually ruggedize this circuit for general lab use. But as it is, it's uh, pretty okay. I'll just put a, a, a diode here at the output just so that uh, there is some uh, mitigation against capacitive and index inductive loads. But hey, uh, just watch that next video and uh, decide what you want and what you don't want to put in a circuit like this, okay? So I'm going to leave this one here. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And uh, as usual, if you have any sort of questions, suggestions, feedback, leave them in the comments below. It's highly appreciated. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one. All right. Bye for now.